Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today is a former NFL quarterback whose career spanned 12 seasons, including four trips to the playoffs. He's a four-time pro bowler and one of only 10 quarterbacks in NFL history to throw for two consecutive 30 touchdown seasons. Jeff Garcia, that's quite a resume. It's not a bad resume, considering I wasn't a drafted guy and I had to go to the Canadian Football League and earn my stripes, so to speak. But uh, yes, it was a great career. I was very fortunate to live it play it, and walk away from it. Uh, so in 99, you make your NFL debut with the 49ers, and you're Steve Young's backup. Then he gets hurt, and then you become the starting quarterback. What was that time like for you when you look back? It was crazy. You know, I looked at the opportunity to go to the 49ers, who was a team. They were the team that I grew up watching. I mean, I was an idol. Joe Montana was my idol. That was the guy that I wanted to emulate. Then Steve Young stepped into the picture, became the starting quarterback there. He was a guy that I pattern my game after in a lot of ways. I thought there were a lot of similarities just from being a mobile quarterback, a guy who can move, lengthen plays. And then all of a sudden I'm with the 49ers. So I'm literally living a childhood dream, being able to come into my backyard, play for my team that I grew up watching and thinking I'm gonna have a couple years here to watch Steve Young, learn from Steve, a future Hall of Famer. I'll be able to kind of hone my game, pattern my game after him, learn from him and then all of a sudden he goes down with an injury and I'm stepping onto the field and I'm still learning. I'm still trying to understand the mental side of what we're trying to do from a scheme standpoint, not getting the physical reps, but then stepping on the field and allowing your instincts and your ability to take over. So then he retired and you officially became the starter. That's when you had those two really great back-to-back -back seasons. There were some doubters previously to that. So is that kind of a point of vindication for you? There have always been doubters. Uh -huh. I mean, coming out of college, there were doubters. There were a lot of people, 32 teams, to be exact, that said I couldn't play in the National Football League. So that's always been my motivation. I think we all have to find ways to fuel our fire. And people that said I couldn't do this, or I couldn't do that, or I couldn't play in the NFL, uh, there may have been a lot of people that supported me, but oftentimes it was those few people that doubted me that drove me. And that's really what it came down to, wanting to prove myself as a great teammate, as a great leader, and somebody who can be efficient, consistent, and uh, a winner in the National Football League. One of your teammates, uh, who actually caught a lot of the balls that you passed to him, was Terrell Owens. Um, you went to three Pro Bowls together, but your relationship was rocky. Why was it rocky? Well, I think you have to look at the pattern. Was it just me that it was rocky with, or has it been rocky with multiple people? I think when you get into a competitive environment and you see things like right now with Pittsburgh and Antonio Brown, the receiver position is a little bit different than the rest of the positions on the team. How so? I, I agree mean, with you, but I want to hear why you but, think so. Because they're reliant on the quarterback to get them the football. Okay. Their opportunity to stand out and to make plays is based upon those number of attempts or catches that they get thrown their way. I've always been about spreading the wealth. I don't care who gets the success, who gets uh -huh. the credit. I just want to win football games at the end of the day. But knowing how he can contribute on the field and knowing if in a game he didn't get his opportunities, well then there was gonna be dissatisfaction. There was gonna be some negativity. And I think at some point there was some fuel that ignited a little bit of a negative tension. We came out of a loss to Minnesota on the road and uh, he was asked a question, do you think it's time for a change at quarterback? Mm -hmm. And he didn't necessarily support me in any sort of way. Because he wasn't getting the ball as much well, as he Well, it wasn't even about not getting the ball. I mean, look at his career. He got the ball. I mean, it's not about not getting the ball. Okay. And Jerry Rice's last game as a Niner, he set a record for catches. Uh -huh. So it wasn't about him not getting the ball. But it was about having some sort of teammate relationship that maybe wasn't what he wanted it to be. I don't know. But uh, there were things that were said back and forth, created a little bit of heat in the locker room. But like I said, at the end of the day, we're a team mm -hmm. and I'm a leader on that team. And so I had to find a way to diffuse the negativity 
go out there and execute a game plan and still get everybody involved, including him, to give us a chance to win football games. How he was gonna handle it, how he wanted to hold a grudge or negativity toward me, that's his decision. I couldn't afford to allow that to disrupt my role for that team. Yeah. It got to a point where we were in a breakfast room together before we played the Detroit Lions. We were the last two guys eating breakfast on that day. And I'm sitting at one table, he comes in, he sits at another table. And uh, I got up out of my seat, I walked over to him and I just said, hey man, whatever the problem is, gotta put it behind us. Mm -hmm. We're here to win football games and play as a team. I'm sorry for whatever the situation was, but you and I need to fix this right now and make it better moving forward. It was a little bit of a, a putting the guard down, letting the true emotion and just realness come out. There may have been things said further down the line in which hey, you want to talk about that, you can, but I know myself and I know who I am, so I can see. He questioned your sexuality, that. right? That's right. So how did it go from that to then you lobbying for him to get in the Hall of Fame? Because I'm a forgive and forget kind of guy. I don't allow negativity to linger in my life. Mm -hmm. I move on from it. I'm not gonna allow certain things that were said that were completely untrue and he knew were untrue when he said them. Where and do you guys stand now? We're good. I, I have no problem with Tio and actually we're working on another league together to launch here in the next uh, couple years. I can look at a person's life mm -hmm. and what they truly represent and understand in the heat of the battle, certain things come out. And I think also men are able to squash negativity and move past it. As much as it was something of that gave me every reason to have dislike, to have maybe some hatred, negativity, whatever the case may be, there are a lot of good experiences on the football field that were shared. The guy was a Hall of Fame player, deserved to be in the Hall of Fame. And if I had an opportunity to stand next to him and say, hey, this guy is everything that he's cracked up to be as far as the numbers are concerned, as far as the difference maker that he was on the football field, then he deserves every right to be in the hall. And you feel comfortable being business partners with him as well? I, I feel confident in the fact that what he brings to the table from the standpoint of his knowledge of the game of football and what he can share with young players coming up through the game from a mentorship standpoint and be involved in something that could really be truly special, then absolutely. And you're not concerned from a mentorship standpoint, these kids, when they see kind of the things that he's said, what they might think about that? I think you also learn from your situations and whether he looks back at it as being a mistake as to what he said or he stands behind it. I know he also has matured in becoming an adult that has responsibility and he's gonna look at certain things that he did and whether he likes it or not, hopefully he chooses to take the path of just being somebody who can be a positive influence in someone's life and not a negative. Okay.